So obviously we kind of live in a disconnected um, social media world. You can't really ignore it. Um, that's how things are. You don't have to like it, but the, that's once again how things are. So how can we use this for our church's benefit? First off, be aware of what kind of um, social media is out there and how people are reaching them. Younger kids are more into Instagram. Um, older adults, adults are more into Facebook. Um, leaders and people who are more um, spokesmen and those kinds of things are more into Twitter. Um, Reddit has its own thing going on. Uh, YouTube is more for, I mean, everybody uses YouTube. You know, if you go, do a Google search, and it'll connect with YouTube. Um, maybe that'll change in the future, but once again, so how can you use these different things? Well, Facebook, um, Facebook is the best for, um, for if you just want to wet your feet in social media as a church. As an individual, um, you don't even have to be on social media uh, unless you're um, – you know, like a key leader, you you write books, you hold seminars, then you're going to want to do Twitter just so you can keep people updated. <clears throat> and just so you can keep people updated on, you know, what you're doing and that kind of stuff. Um, so, okay, with Facebook, the best way to reach an audience is through live feed. That's where you get a phone or what, some kind of something with a webcam and you go live and stream. If you don't know how to do that, you can find your answers on uh, online. Twitter is best used by just giving um, short uh, uh, quotes or excerpts or something like that. Twitter is not really the place for rants. Um, uh, we'll get to that other, some other time. YouTube is more for general um, general videos. You can use them for a lot of different things. You can use them for um, you can put your sermons, um, catalog them on, on YouTube. You can do that. Um, you can address certain certain things or have your discipleship classes or stuff like that on YouTube. Um, you can have series uh, of stuff that you do on YouTube, um, that kind of stuff. Maybe what your church is about, all those kinds of things. Um, all those are great. Instagram is more for photos. So like um, you're going to want to take pictures of, of different like events or something and then post a real quick excerpt under the picture maybe um, just about it and put hashtags on it and – Send that off. If you don't know what hashtags are, it's the one that looks like a pound, um, and then it connects it with different things online, and also uh, people use it as like just a, a funny thing. Like sometimes you'll say like, hashtag sorry, not sorry, something like that. You know what I mean? Where, where they mean it more in like a sarcastic way. But anyways, so the social media itself. There are a few rules that leaders should probably be aware of. First off, make sure that the opinions that you share are clarified as your own. Um, don't post things that could be controversial on the church's Facebook because if you taint the church's uh, um, name in the public eye, you're going to have a hard time getting rid of it. And uh, even if you didn't mean it as something that's a, that's a negative factor, if it was perceived as a negative factor, that's all that really matters. With social presence, it's not about what you meant. It's about what was received. Remember that. Um, so y you want to keep things that are controversial, controversial to your own private uh, uh, Facebook account, um, or if you have your own per personal uh, Facebook uh, page, either of those things, or a group or something, whatever, just make sure that it's, that it's clarified that it's your opinions, not the opinions of the church. In my opinion, we should we should build um, a wall between us and Mexico because blank and blank and blank. Um, this is not the opinion of the church. And we welcome other people, uh, people of other uh, opinions, something like that, where it's absolutely clear. But with that being said, you probably shouldn't, probably shouldn't um, get into that. <laughs> That's kind of just asking for people to leave your church or to not come to your church. And we're not establishing a little kingdom on earth. That's what they try to do with the Crusades. We're trying to establish God's kingdom, which cannot die and won't ever fade. Um, so okay. Uh, stay out of politics as much as possible. You lose an audience. Oh, let me tell you a story about this. We have a food pantry, and uh, we had said um, some things <laughs> about uh, Democrats, and one of the people who had come that day was a Democrat, and obviously he took offense to it. And that's not the only time this happened. It's happened actually quite frequently. Now, obviously, everybody makes mistakes. It's already done, so it's in the past. But with that being said... When you say we are Republicans, Republicans are the right way, you're removing every other possible connection. 
especially in today's very politically heated culture. Everybody seems to be very um, into politics, which is very unfortunate for me because I hate talking about politics. I don't like Republicans, and I really don't like Democrats either, so I don't like either group. And so you have all these people saying you have to do this or you have to do this. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to choose. <laughs> but anyways, so try and stay out of politics. Never, ever, ever mention politics from the stage um, because you're not there for people who voted. And remember this. Even if someone terrible is in office, God's kingdom will continue. Even if you get somebody in office who's a tyrant, God's kingdom will endure. If you get someone who's, who's corrupt, God's kingdom will endure. If you get a liberal, if you get a conservative, it doesn't matter. God's kingdom will endure. Now, obviously, go vote, do whatever, it doesn't matter, but leave politics off the stage. Your calling as a pastor is too high to muddy it down with politics. Okay? And if you share opinions about politics elsewhere off the stage, make sure that, that, that it's known. First off, between you and someone who you're close to, not just open talking and singing off, that is clarified that it's your views and your views alone. When you say we are Republican, this church is Republican, we welcome Republicans, Republicans are doing it right, everybody else is stupid, you are cutting off your audience. You're saying we don't love these people. We won't reach these people. These people have to be like us for us to even consider them. It's like uh, my pastor said, he said, we expect people to act like Jesus so that we can lead them to Jesus. But that's not how things work. But let me just clarify, Jesus was not a Republican before – Before I, I did not even mean to imply that. I just – after I said it, I, I realized that I sounded like I was implying. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not – no. Just no. So remember to stay out of politics. Um, no rants. Oh my goodness, no rants. If you have something to say about transgenders, if you have something to say about um, Jenner – if you have something to say about uh, the wall, if you have something to say about, I don't care. Write it down on a piece of paper. Crumple that piece of paper up. Light it on fire. Your opinions do not matter. Okay? They are your own. Not only that, but people don't care what you know or what your reasons are if they don't care about you. So if you're posting things on social media, which can never be taken away, it's always out there, and you're posting out there, even if your opinions change in the future, you will forever be marked as that. Do you really want to carry that burden with the church and with you? Do you really want to muddy your name or the church's name? Let's say you live in a democratic, I'm sorry, a, a democrat uh, county or whatever, and then you're constantly talking about how Republicans are good and Democrats are stupid. Well, it might not be the best tactic. And I that, but it probably shouldn't matter that much to you because remember, you're going to die. This nation will eventually fall, and the world will eventually burn with fire. So it really doesn't even matter. So just remember those things. However, um, remember that your rants probably won't change anything. They might make people mad. They might cut off your audience, but they really won't change anything. Remember that. And if you have something that really, really, really needs to be said, like um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but something that really, really, really needs to be said – a, make sure that it's said respectfully, and B, make sure that it's not said in such a way that ostracizes people, like, oh, those people aren't good enough to be saved. Avoid correcting people. Um, Facebook, see, the people were already saying this dumb stuff that they say on Facebook before. They just started publicly airing it on Facebook because now they don't just mumble under their breath and move on. Instead, they go and post it online, and then they argue their point, and then people argue with them, and then it turns into this big, ugly thing. Avoid correcting people on Facebook. They're going to say things that they regret. They're going to say stupid things, but they were already going to say it anyways. The only difference is now you know that they were saying the stupid thing that they were already saying. So with that being said, let it go. Let them make their mistakes or whatever, you know, and then just, just move on. You don't want to get caught up in this kind of nonsense on Facebook. Um, it will make first off. First off, you won't have an audience in the future, so that's that's not not good. Um, with everything that you share or post, make sure you spell check. Nothing makes it makes a church look worse than just misspelled crap. And then the second thing, if you are on your own personal thing, source check everything. If you lose your credibility by posting something that's not true, as though it were true, you will lose your credibility on the stage. Because people know this guy doesn't actually know what he's talking about. Is the, what he's saying true? I don't know. Uh, be aware of what is public. Um, 
beware of sharing things publicly, beware of posting things publicly, beware, just beware of those things. You really have to be on your guard in the age of social media. Um, don't use it for primary contact. If you want to contact somebody, <laughs> excuse me, call them, send an email, say hi to them, whatever, just stay off of Facebook um, for that. You really don't want to waste too much time with that because it kind of sets up um, an idea towards people about maybe you're too busy or maybe they'll think that you're on social media all the time, um, which once again, well, who cares what they think? Well, okay, but remember that 90% of, of church leadership is politics. It's you know uh, having a good image in the public eye. Social media is all about public image. It doesn't matter what was intended. It matters what was received. Once you understand that, you'll be ready to ready to go into into social media. Don't don't post things that are emotionally revealing. Uh, I've learned that one from experience. You, you just it's not the time or the place. So don't use it for primary contact. None of that, but it's very impersonal. I got a Facebook message from the pastor. It kind of can often, can often also time. It can also feel like sometimes. <laughs> don't know why I had such a problem with that. That maybe the pastor is intruding on your space. So be aware of these things. Turn off notifications if you have a smartphone, uh, which in the in today's age, as a pastor, I would highly discourage that because there's a lot of reasons. First off, porn is very easily accessible on on, on smartphones. Um, second, there's just too much. People are always interrupting you and always bothering you, which is what brings me to this point here. Turn off all your notifications. If you do Facebook, fine, whatever. Turn off the notifications. And don't mindlessly scroll. Go on Facebook or Twitter or whatever for a reason. Do that and then get off. Maybe even have set times or set days. Um, I get up at between 6 and 6.30 and do social media. Whatever. Whatever. Just have set times or some way of keeping you in check where you're not doing it all the time. And then ask yourself this question whenever you post or send anything online. Can it be used against you? Would this possibly be misunderstood? There was one thing that there was this person who just refused to grow, refused to grow. I worked very, very, very personally with them for a number of years, and nothing happened. And I thought we were good enough friends, so I sent them a message, um, which I meant as an, occur an encouragement, but it wasn't received that way. Long story short, they ended up leaving the church, which they probably would have done anyways because you, you either grow or you leave. I mean, when there's a church with direction, you're not going to feel comfortable with everybody growing and you not. So either you're going to get on board or you're going to leave. That's really the only way that it goes um, in time. And I'm not saying chase people off. I didn't mean to chase people off, but I accidentally did. We all make mistakes. You can't beat yourself over the past. You move on. Um, but what I had sent could have been used against me. In fact, it was used against me against some of the other leaders. Now, luckily, the leaders were on my side, <laughs> and I was able to explain myself. But um, that's not always the case. If you've got kind of a rocky situation with leadership at the church, that's going to be an issue. Um, so can I be used against you? Will people go behind your back talking about you about stuff? Make sure that you stay above reproach, not just offline, but online too. Don't post stuff and share stuff that could be one-sided about immigration or about people who are in politics. Just stay out of it. You don't have to prove to people that you disapprove of a president's actions. You don't have to prove to people. For instance, the comment that President Trump made in the locker room. I'm pretty sure we all know that we shouldn't talk like that. Let's move on. It's that easy. Move on. In this, in this age... Everything is spec. Everything is um, not speculated. Everything is um, analyzed and criticized. What are the chances that something that he said in a locker room would be heard? Well, evidently pretty high. And the same thing is true as a pastor. You have to be on your guard. Things that you say and do, you might not think anything of it, but it might seriously impact the church or your ministry. And these are things you have to take into account when you're on social media. You'd be surprised how quickly something can circulate. It gets shared. It gets shared to somebody else before you know it. Everybody knows about this racist pastor. And it's like, well, I didn't mean that at all. That's not what I meant to say. It was taken out of context or whatever. You know, it's out there. And once again, people don't care what act what the truth is. They care what, what they thought the truth was. So don't post too much. Whether This goes for whether you're talking about your personal page or um, uh, your, your church's thing. You don't want to post all the time. People will just hide the updates, and then they won't get any of the updates, and then you'll lose an audience. Um,
usually when you keep things simple, short, um, maybe something with a graphic, especially on Facebook, um, statistically speaking, people will watch uh, something that's common more. So like if you share something that maybe is on Christian radio and then just put a tag in it or something, um, or a short quote or something, or maybe uh, sometimes things with pictures will get shared more or seen more. Um, so you, you want to be aware of that. Um, if you're just posting a, uh, doing a post, make sure it's just short and simple. If you're posting an event, make sure it's clear. Make sure that if they need more information, there's somewhere that they can go to. Make sure that everything's well marked. Explain it as though it was the first time in the community because what about people who it is their first time in the community? So don't um, don't post not enough either. If, and this is specifically not about you personal. This is about the churches. If people go on, on your um, online presence and things are out of date, they're they're not being posted on regularly. It, you're going to lose points. People will judge you before people judge your church from the moment they stepped on the parking lot. Nowadays, they judge you from the moment they see you online, and then they get there. And so by the time that they get to your parking lot, you may already have two strikes against you. And so then they get inside if they can find where the front door is, if it's easily marked, and they get inside. And then maybe things just kind of felt mm, off, unorganized. You, you now have three strikes, and you haven't even started the service yet. Now, once again, I'm not saying we all need to be secret sensitive. I get that. I, I kind of hate the secret sensitive role. But that doesn't mean you have to purposely try to turn people off either. You can do things and do them with excellence because God, God is good, and God does things with excellence, and we are his. So I quote Chris Hanksen a lot. You really just need to get in, in, into him. And uh, so obviously with all those things in mind, have a kingdom focus for everything that you do. Don't post, don't share, don't do anything without asking yourself some questions. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it something that God would say? Would Jesus waste his time with this? Have a kingdom focus. Is this going to reach more people or less? Am I limiting my audience or, am I, or am, is it so applicable that it's applicable to everybody? Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is applicable to everybody. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, this is not. Um, they need to get their act together and they need to build that wall. And Is that going to be applicable to everybody? Well, first off, you're going to have a lot of immigrants that are going to be opposed to that. So you just lost that audience. Um, you're going to have Democrats who are against that, and then you're going to have some, even a lot of Republicans are against that, and then you're going to have people that don't like Republicans or Democrats that are against it. So you just lost not, not just half your audience. You lost a large part of your audience. Remember these things. Have a kingdom focus for everything you do. Be aware of the things that you post, and if you're not sure how to do it, get help. Get coaching. Uh, ask other people. Read books on it. Read blogs on it. Don't post until you know what you're doing.